And good morning, everyone. Today I'm going to talk about um, our paper on how to secure SMT processors against contention-based side channels. But what is an SMT processor? And why do we need them? So uh, superscalar processors um, have multiple execution units to take advantage of instruction level parallelism and to be able to execute multiple instructions in the same cycle. So for example, in a four array uh, superscalar processor, each cycle we would ideally have four instructions issued to uh, each of our execution units. But what happens in reality is, uh, due to various reasons, for example, uh, due to um, longer latency instructions such as cache misses or TLB misses or possibly page faults, in many cycles you don't have any instruction uh, to issue to your functional units. But even when you don't have uh, longer latencies, you cannot always fully utilize your fu uh, functional units uh, because you don't have enough independent instructions in your uh, programs. Basically, instruction level parallelism in your software usually falls short of uh, available hardware level uh, instruction level parallelism. So we end up with these heavily unutilized uh, execution units uh, due to what we call vertical or horizontal wastes. One solution proposed uh, for this problem is to use instructions from multiple threads to uh, fill our execution units. And the most prominent uh, multi-threading architecture is SMT or simultaneous multi-threading in which the pipeline has the ability to uh, execute multiple instructions from multiple threads in the same cycle. SMT with just a very small investment in hardware can gain significant performance, uh, almost double in some cases. And that's why it has been implemented by virtually all the major players in high performance um, processor industry. But the problem is that now you have to share a lot of resources between the threads, which create a security problem. For example, if you share your floating point functional units between the threads, a malicious thread can spy on a, uh, on a victim thread. So our attacker can monitor the timing of his own floating point instructions. And if they run fast, that means um, there is no contention from the victim. But if they run slow, that means the victim has executed a floating point instruction. And basically, this type of sharing allows uh, an attacker thread to gain fine grained information about a victim's thread. A floating point functional unit was just one example. With SMT, almost every part of the pipeline is shared between the threads, which creates a huge problem for security. And that uh, uh, has put SMT at a high risk of being turned off in the name of security. Google, OpenBSD, and Red Hat, they have all introduced uh, new ways to disable this feature in their uh, uh, future kernels. The goal of this research is to design an SMT processor that is as secure as a multi-core processor to contention-based side channels, so that we can make it a reasonable security decision to turn on SMT again. Naturally, the first step is to understand to what extent modern SMT processors are vulnerable to uh, uh, information leakage. Pipeline resources can have different sharing mechanisms between the threads. For example, the threads can dynamically share a resource like instruction cache, or they can each use uh, only half of a resource if the resource is statically partitioned. Our goal is to find out which of these resources are uh, statically uh, partitioned, which are dynamically shared, and if a resource is dynamically shared, to what extent that creates a security leakage. So we design multi-threaded programs specific to each of these resources. And these programs create contention on uh, each resource and make sure that the effect of the contention is visible through the execution time of the program, similar to what uh, we saw in uh, floating point uh, functional units. 
we went through a comprehensive list of uh, pipeline resources and identified if the resource is dynamically shared or statically partitioned, and what is the bandwidth of the covert channel that uh, you can create on those resources. We show that AMD and Intel uh, take very different approaches uh, uh, to security performance trade-off, but both of them suffer from uh, high, high bandwidth covert channels that need to be mitigated. We also found and characterized multiple new uh, covert channels, including, for example, fetch bandwidth covert channel that has a higher bandwidth uh, than a regular cache side channels in our setup. Okay. So what can we do to mitigate this, uh, this information leakage? Well, one approach is to mitigate these one by one. One mitigation for caches, another one for TLB, another mitigation for um, branch predictors. But this approach does not scale well. So what we were looking for was a unified approach uh, that you can apply to all of these resources, uh, maybe with some small variation. The most obvious one is a static partitioning uh, that completely blocks the information flow uh, from both threads, but of course with a huge performance overhead. We propose adaptive partitioning uh, where you can change the boundary between the threads every adaptation period. Uh, this limits the communication between the threads to once every adaptation period, but uh, we show that even a very large interval can gain back significant performance, uh, the performance that we lost due to partitioning. We also proposed asymmetric SMT, a novel security approach that allows communication from a low security thread to a high security thread, but not the other way around. Just one example where this is useful is sandboxing in web browsers. While it is not secure to leak information from the browser thread to the sandbox thread, it is safe to leak information from the sandbox thread to the browser thread. So we utilize this by allowing the unused resources from an untrusted thread to be securely utilized by the trusted thread. The idea is to reserve resources to the sandbox thread and make it run in a constant and predictable way. So for example, here we look at the load queue, and we reserve half of the load queue entries to the sandbox thread. So far, exactly similar to the uh, static partitioning. But usually, there are many cycles where uh, the sandbox does not use all of its uh, load queue entries. Now, the privileged thread can actually borrow a resource, uh, borrow an entry from the sandbox partition. However, we should make sure that uh, we can immediately return the borrowed resource if the sandbox uh, thread needs it. So the borrowing needs to be completely transparent from a uh, sandbox pr uh, perspective. And if we do that, we need to reissue the privilege instruction uh, that, that we just flushed to uh, ensure the correct execution of the privilege thread. And interestingly, the same mechanism can work for a wide range of pipeline resources with just a small variation. We categorized pipeline resources broadly into two categories. Stateful resources, uh, th th those are resources that hold a state across multiple cycles. Uh, resources like load queue, instruction queue, or physical registers are stateful res uh, resources. And if you make a stateful resource uh, asymmetric, then you should make sure that you can return the borrowed resource immediately. And, and then therefore, you need to flush instructions and be able to reissue instructions. But luckily, modern processors have already well, uh, the, are, are already well equipped to deal with such scenarios. Uh, for example, they have uh, uh, flushing and reissuing mechanisms for branch prediction and lots of other uh, scenarios. On the other hand, if you don't use a stateless resource uh, for a cycle, uh, state, uh, stateless resources such as uh, execution units or fetch bandwidth, then they will be wasted. And the beauty of asymmetric SMT is that uh, if you apply it to stateless resources, then you don't even need to return the borrowed resource. 
So if a stateless resource is not used, you just uh, can, can borrow it uh, without any consequences. Caches are a special type of uh, stateful resources. And the problem with caches is that once, you, once your cache is filled, then uh, there would be no free entries uh, anymore, so you cannot borrow. Because you always have something in your cache. So uh, what we can do here is to define a maximum number of cycles that a cache block can stay in the cache without being accessed. And this is a very simple form of dead block elimination uh, that I show here for simplicity. But uh, we, we use a more complicated one in the paper. So here, we evict any block that has not been touched uh, for a while. And if we do this, um, we will have free entries, and we can uh, enable borrowing again. And returning a, a borrowed resource, uh, borrowed cache block is easy because it's, a, it's just a replacement and you don't require a, a instruction flush. Okay, with SecSMT, we address contention-based side channels across uh, all the pipeline structures, enabling continued use of these uh, performance-critical uh, structures while executing securely. We are able to reduce the performance overhead of uh, partitioning close to the performance overhead of uh, the performance of an insecure, uh, dynamically shared pipeline. Thanks for listening, and I'm happy to answer questions.